Hello everyone. Today I will be talking to you about Bose-Einstein statistics and how they can be used to derive Planck's radiation law. Now Bose-Einstein statistics were first developed by Satyendra Nat Bose in 1924. Bose was the first one to apply the distribution to the quantum study of photons. Later, Albert Einstein helped Bose to publish his work and applied the distribution to other problems. The Bose-Einstein distribution can be used in many quantum physics problems, and I will now show you how it can be used to derive Planck's radiation law. So seen here, we have the uh, Bose-Einstein distribution in its numerical form. The G term here is the density of states as a function of energy, and the FBE term is the Bose-Einstein factor, which is defined by this formula over here. The law that we're going to be deriving today is shown here. It's Planck's radiations law in its form. It's one of the early equations of quantum physics. Now, in order to start this problem, we need to first think of electromagnetic radiation in terms of quantum theory. And in order to do that, we need to think of electromagnetic radiation as photons of energy. And that is done by using this formula right here, E equals hc over lambda, where h is Planck's constant, c is the speed of light, and lambda is the wavelength. In order to start deriving the law, we need to start with this energy state equation right here. And this equation is actually the energy state for a 3D infinite square well potential cube, which is visualized right here. Now this cube is of length L, and has a particle inside it of mass m. And this formula would typically describe the energy state of that particle. But because we're talking about photons in this case, we need to rewrite this energy state equation in terms of uh, no mass because a photon is a massless particle. So in order to do that, we use this equation, which relates energy and momentum. By substituting that equation into our current energy state equation, we get here an equation for the momentum in terms of the integer quantum numbers and talks about the momentum state. We're going to rewrite that in terms of the energy of a photon and we're going to do that by using this formula right here. Now this formula substituted in allows us to end up with a law for the energy state as a function of these quantum numbers, the length L of the cube and these factors for the energy state of our photon. Now we can rewrite our integer state quantum numbers as a single radius r, and we do this by using Pythagorean theorem in order to relate the components of this 3D triangle that we're talking about here. So you can see here, r will be this term, n1, n2, and n3. And then we get our rewritten energy state equation in terms of this single value r, which will discuss our quantum state. Now the number of allowed energy states within this radius r is given by this formula shown right here. You may notice that this formula is very similar to the volume of a sphere with the addition of several multiplying factors. I've given here on the left a visualization of what this formula would look like. We're considering here the number of allowed energy states within this area, this, sorry, volume that is shown right here. The 1 8th term is to get this 1 8th portion of the full 3D sphere in order that our, we will only be talking about positive quantum numbers for this eighth component instead of the full 3D sphere where we might get other values. And the two modifier here in this equation is actually due to spin degeneracy, and this is outside the scope of this video. So by combining equation one here and equation two, we can come up with this equation right here, which talks about the number of allowed energy states for, but is only defined in terms of the energy and the length as well as some constants. From this equation, the density of states 
for our Bose-Einstein distribution can be calculated by taking the derivative of the equation with respect to energy. This in turn yields this equation on the right here, which can now be substituted into our Bose-Einstein distribution. So I've shown here again the Bose-Einstein distribution as well as the Bose-Einstein factor with some modifiers. In this case, we're going to consider the term beta right here as 1 over kT, where k is the Boltzmann constant and t is the temperature. In addition, this modifying factor, which is at the, typically at the front of this exponent, has been normalized to 1 for our case. And the reason that we do this is because we're not focusing on a particular normal number of photons. We're instead focusing on relative number of photons at different energies. So because of this, we normalize to 1 for this equation. Now you can see he rewritten here our numerical distribution for the Bose-Einstein distribution. With these all the formulas substituted in, we have the component that's the density of states, as well as that beta factor that I was talking about there. Now we re need to rewrite this equation from a numerical distribution to some type of energy distribution. And we do that by multiplying by this constant right here, which is the energy per unit volume. So after multiplying both sides by this value, we're going to come up with this equation that is shown right here. Now this equation relates the energy per unit volume to these factors and is looking a lot closer to our radiation law. Now, for this solution, we want to look at the photons for a specific change in, in energy, and therefore we introduce this derivative into the formula. We're now going to factor in that formula that we spoke of previously, where we were, are going to look at radiation in terms of photons of energy, and I've got here the formula shown as well as the deriv derivative of that formula right here. By substituting these two terms into our formula, we end up with this equation that is shown right here. Now this equation gives us the, um, excuse me, the energy density per unit area per unit wavelength um, for the solution. And we can see here that we've eliminated all of the energy terms from the right hand side and we have this just in terms of lambda and t. It's actually looking very close to Planck's radiation law. Now in order to create the actual Planck's radiation law that we know, which is, talks about the spectral distribution, we have to multiply by this constant right here, C over 4. Multiplication by this constant gives the power per unit area per unit length when this equation is solved. This is equivalent to the spectral density that we know to be the solution for Planck's radiation law. And highlighted here you can see at the bottom Planck's radiation law defined using Bose-Einstein statistics. You can see that the solution is relatively simple, does not involve a lot of complex math or notation, and can be solved with relative ease using basic algebra. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please post in the comments.